Hey guys, Brandon with Scooter Swap Shop here in Portland, Oregon. Um, first off, we have a full-blown website with everything for just about any scooter on the market, <clears throat> specializing in two-stroke and performance. But we've also got a brick-and-mortar store um, here. We do a lot of service and dyno tuning and whatnot. So anyhow, we've been making videos on parts and explaining how certain kits work and, and tuning them and, uh, and installs and whatnot. But I realize we don't really have anything that just explains the super, super basics of CVT system and how these things work. So it's a two-stroke engine. So you've got, this is a two-stroke per se. This is a Honda Dio um, 94-01 Elite style motor. You've got no valves, no timing chains, um, nothing that sort because um, it's a two-stroke. So so you've got no motor oil. Um, uh, your your gas and fuel is pulled in. So anyways, and, and bear with me because I'm just going dummy mode here. This is super basic, but carburetor controls your air and fuel that comes into your engine carb cables so gas comes in goes through this intake manifold you've got a reed valve in here which is just a bit basically a big one-way valve that the air goes through and it gets pulled down as your as your piston goes up it's pulling it's creating suction that's pulling um, air and fuel through the carburetor down into the bottom end okay as it's going up as it comes down this valve shuts it pressurizes all the fuel and air in your bottom end and it opens up ports that allows that air and fuel to come up in over the top of the piston the piston comes back up and combusts that fuel and goes out the exhaust so that's just super basic layman uh, dummy terms here but spark plug on the top um, but that's the super basics on how two stroke works you've got gaskets down here any of your gaskets if any of your gaskets leak you've got bad seals when this piston goes up you're going to be pulling air in um, without fuel so um, that's how you get a lean situation when you're on hot if any of your gaskets leak you're going to be pulling air in with fuel any air that enters this motor needs to be mixed needs to go through here okay if you got air coming in anywhere else it's not getting mixed with fuel and you're getting um, you'll end up running lean so that's where your piston and everything is your rings your crank this is one end of the crank this is the other side of the crank. That's your stator charging system. That's what resp is responsible for your ignition timing and your charging. So that's your flywheel. This is your ignition pickup here. When this little magnet rolls across, it tells it when to spark. So that's the other side of the crank. The crank is inside the engine. So um, here you've got a dry face. You've got a pulley, which is often referred to as a variator. And then there's a ramp plate behind here. So as this motor revs up, these rollers roll out. And basically this this ratio okay right now it's a, it's as small as it gets and the back is as big as it gets this gives you your bottom end as these rollers roll out this distance here will close driving the belt further up around up up here as that as that this closes and your belt goes higher this belt down here drops all the way down to its lowest point in the back kind of like that so this is responsible for all your transmission shifting, your clutch engagement, and everything. I would say, I would say jetting is probably 15, 10% of the battle with tuning, maybe less than that. Your transmission and CVT tuning is your other 85, 90% hands down. This is way more crucial as far as your tuning goes than your jetting. Jetting, typically you get it set and you don't mess with it. If you've got a good carb, um, which, this is what we run. If you got a good card, you're not gonna have problems with it. Once you set it, set it and forget it. So, your okay, what's going on is your engine's gonna spin, your belt's gonna spin, right? Okay, so your engine's spinning and running. This clutch spins and it's got shoes on the inside of the clutch, or on the outside of the clutch, it has shoes. So as this spins, these springs, basically it's centrifugal force. So the faster it spins, it causes those shoes to spin out and it grips, grips on the inside of this clutch. See right now, it's just freewheeling, okay? It won't, it won't grab. But the faster you go, this clutch will loosen up and grab onto the clutch, make contact, and when it does that, then you're gonna start turning your wheel. So, if, you, if these clutch springs are too loose, okay, it's gonna grab way too early. If it grabs too early, on a two-stroke, two you've got a power band. So let's say this motor makes power at 8,000 RPM. If your clutch is grabbing at five or 5,500, you've got a stock clutch, your clutch is gonna grab, and all this is gonna start shifting way before the power band. It's like you're starting your car off in fourth gear. So I can't stress enough how crucial it is to have your clutch adjusted properly to grab um, at the right RPM. On the other the flip side, if it's grabbing too high, you're, gonna, you're just gonna spin and you're gonna smoke this clutch and 
you're you're going to eventually go but it's going to take a long time and you're going to glaze over those clutch pads and heat up your belt so um some of these bells are nice because they're lightened and they, they're vented and whatnot to keep them a little bit cooler as well so your rollers are responsible for your rollers and you've got a center spring back here that's basically responsible for how fast and what rate your transmission changes gears at your clutch is just responsible for where it grabs at at the bottom end inside here you've got primary and secondary gears that's where you change your gear ratio so you want to go faster um, more bottom end whatever you're, you're going to change your gear ratio in here so dry face variator slash pulley with your ramp plate in the back clutch bell your clutch is back here this this is your rear pulley there's a spring down in here called your contra spring your belt your intake manifold your reeds are right here they sandwich in between carburetor cylinder cylinder head spark plug so again super super basic stuff i just figured i'd take a minute to show you guys just because i don't think i've gone over the super basics for like the beginners so and your stator you see if i can find the magnet you got a little magnet here there it is so when that magnet comes all the way around it's going to go this way and it crosses over this pickup that's when it tells it to spark so if you there's a flywheel key in here that tell that locates where this is if your flywheel key is off you won't have any or you will have spark it'll just be at the wrong time so there you have it you guys got any questions let me know but this is just like i said just uh basics for beginners who are trying to understand um just the overall picture of how this stuff works thanks guys